A while back, I found a gaming PC on the side of the road in a rough state with so much going on with it, I didn't even know what to begin to think of it. So much so that I had to make two parts just to barely dive into this PC and see what it was and what it was capable of. I have made a few videos since then, but I have been quietly working on this PC in the background. So after much anticipation and from what felt like hundreds of comments from you guys, I am proud to unveil the Side of the Road Gaming PC Finale. After I finished part 2, I wasn't sure if anyone would care to see a part 3 or see me continue on with this computer in some way, shape, or form. I couldn't have been any more happier to be wrong about that. I have built up some parts over time for this guy to give him a much better life and reuse a good chunk of the parts from the PC, specifically the motherboard AIO and CPU, as they are all in relatively good condition. There will be a handful of new parts for this whole setup too since I want this guy to be usable for some time to come. First however comes the dismantling of the old PC. But while I do that, I can talk about what I've learned about this PC case since the last video in this trilogy. Apparently this is a Cooler Master Stacker 830. They were built in around 2005 and have many variations of this PC case, ranging from a Spartan design, to a skull version with steel accents, to the one I currently have which is apparently one of the rarest designs of them all. I believe it is around second place behind the skull one with only 150 of those having ever been made. But Smooth Curations, who hand painted all the designs for the cases, made only 200 of the Blue Flame Edition. It is rather incredible that they made this, and honestly, I want to completely bring this thing back to life one day, if I can find the parts. But this isn't cheap or easy to do, as the cases and the parts that are used to make them are too far in, in between. I have chosen a budget case for this budget build, but hopefully I will revisit this PC case another day. Especially if I find spare parts from the Red Flame model so that I may cross over the designs and make them collide. But before we move on, I want to go over a few parts of the case that I couldn't go over because I either didn't have the information or the pieces to show them off. Apparently this case is very modular hands-on, which was already obvious due to its removable motherboard tray. But even the back I.O. can be reorganized to your liking based on what the board can have and the orientation you need it to be in. The side panel had some interesting fan stuff on it too, which I think was exclusive to the Smooth Creations models as the regular cases don't appear to have them. I am sure I am missing other things here, but I don't want to talk about the case forever. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything about this, if you maybe own this or any cases like this before. Still, it's so crazy that cases like this one aren't popular anymore. And I bet they could be pretty cost effective too, if designed right for a true PC enthusiast. Way better than the price tag of $600 when these guys were being made. But I have gone long enough about this case. Now let's talk about some of the other parts and upgrades this PC will be getting. I have a bunch of used pieces of hardware for this guy to breathe new life into him, but let's take it one step at a time here, starting off with the case. This is a generic mid-tower that I found for around $47. Despite it being kind of bland honestly, it does have a tempered glass panel and its own RGB strip on the front. Not bad. But the reason I decided to go with it was because of its capability of housing a radiator in the front, which I need if I want to use the AIO. It also supports EATX, which is a nice surprise even though the board we have is just a standard full ATX. Overall, I think I got this case at a great price. It should get the job done and hopefully be easy to work with. Now as for our RAM, I bought 32GB of Corsair Vengeance clocked at 1866MHz. 4 8 gig sticks for 55 bucks is isn't too shabby. They seem a little sketch, but as long as they can do the job, I don't care too much as long as they can last for a while. At least they are pretty fast for DDR3 and can be overclocked with our CPU. Next, we can talk about the video card I decided to go with. This build, while nice, isn't too crazy and I wouldn't want to put a high-end card in it unless our CPU was much faster than what it is already. Because of this, I decided to go with the RX 580 that I got off AliExpress for $60, as it is a great mid-range card for this mid-ranged build. It will run most games at high settings with no problem, since our biggest bottleneck for the PC is our CPU, the i5-4460. So any more than this might be overkill, honestly. Now the only problem here, which I think is the case's fault, is that I can't line up the holes for the GPU to screw it down. I spent half an hour trying to line it up and had to resort to using the zip tie method, in which you loop and tie down one of the holes with a zip tie 
and use the leverage to secure it in and get one of the other screws on. It's a little jank, but it will keep the video card in place and stop it from sagging or damaging the connectors on the PCB from moving around too much if it gets nudged or anything like that. I will clip off the extra zip tie cord later after I cable manage this PC. So for now, I thought the hardest part of the PC was over, but honestly, it got a little bit more complicated. Besides this being my first time mounting an AIO with a radiator, I had a very tough time working with this case. The first problem arose when I couldn't even get the front panel off because the plastic clips holding it in were in the worst spots imaginable. But after nearly half an hour, I managed to pop it off. It took a couple tries to get the correct spots lined up and screwed in for the 240mm radiator, but I just barely got everything to screw into place. The water block didn't even reach the first time too, and I had to raise the radiator up just so I could get it to fit in without tugging too hard on the hoses. After doing so and retightening the radiator back into its spot, I was able to mount our water block onto our CPU snugly. For my first time working with an AIO, I think I did a pretty good job. Anyways, for our last part, I decided to use a power supply I had laying around that I got six months ago in case I needed to build a low-end or mid-ranged PC really quick. It was, of course, for the 20th time on this channel, the Eris Game 500 Watt PSU. I believe I got it for around 40 bucks, I think? Maybe it was less than that. I think I remember getting it for a good deal. But um, while I have heard people having trouble with these in the past, it should get the job done for now. And to make this generic, rather cheap power supply look a bit nicer, I'm going to be doing something that a fellow YouTuber of mine, Xbuilt Customs, does to spruce up his power supplies. I'm going to be adding a small piece of vinyl to cover up the details on the side that will be viewable from our tempered glass panel. I'll be using a carbon fiber design to make it look a little sleek. It should make the whole build a lot more professional looking and valuable, at least I hope it does. But as I was getting the power supply in the case to screw it down and cable manage the rat's nest in the back, my camera died on me. But I think that's a good thing here. The cable management isn't that important and is very easy for this case all things considered. Plus it adds suspense to when I finally boot up, which hopefully it starts. Success. Despite the RGB being out of sync and the front RGB strips not being usable for this setup, things boot up nicely. Well, almost. Once I finally plugged in a monitor, I noticed I couldn't even make it to the BIOS, which is weird. Do you see that red light on the board? That is the debug light for our memory, the DRAM light. I've spent the last three nights literally troubleshooting this issue to find out what was going on. I thought my RAM was bad or that they needed to be reseated or something along those lines, only to learn that none of my sticks were the problem, but that it was the far right dim slot causing the issue on the motherboard. I could use every stick, no matter what, in any orientation or configuration, but for some odd reason, if I put any stick in the RAM slot, the PC refuses to post. I even tried putting in the original RAM to see if that did anything, which it didn't. And no one online seems to have the solution to this issue. For the most part, they either luckily get it running, quit trying and deal with it, or RMA the motherboard. Well, I think it's too late to return the board to ASUS, I mean I never e even bought it in the first place, and this is kind of where my luck ends, so I guess we will just have to deal with it for now. Just so that we can run things in dual channel, I will only put two sticks in. It's sad that we won't be able to run all 32 gigabytes, but 16 is still plenty for a low-end mid-range budget PC like this one. Other than that, how does this PC run? As well as you expect. It will play any game with medium to very high settings, but it will bottleneck at certain points. I already technically tested this video card before, which you can see in my AliExpress GPU video, so I will only do the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark since it will give everyone a good idea of how well the system will run all things considered with this configuration. It is basically running at its limits, but this is fine. Of course, I will be showing a side-by-side -side since OBS always eats up a lot of processing power when I record and bench at the same time. And once again, the frame data doesn't lie. I run the benchmark at very high instead of high like how I did in the AliExpress video since it should start topping out at this preset. Weirdly enough though, I got better performance despite my CPU running harder than the i5-9400F I had in that video and I got a higher frame rate even though my GPU wasn't even running as hard as it was either. I haven't even gotten to overclocking yet and for some reason 
things already seem really good. Weird. And I was also running DDR4 RAM too. Well, whatever the reason is, I won't be finding out anytime soon, since I'm sure that's just another rabbit hole. Computers are fun. Also, this reminds me. After the benchmark, I did overclock the CPU a little bit, but only a little. I around 0.2 megahertz faster, I think. As for the RAM, I was able to get it running at 1906 megahertz, which is more than fast enough for this PC, all things considered. Thankfully, the BIOS had literally a baby mode for overclocking, which made this very easy and only took 20 seconds to accomplish. I won't perform any more tests after this though, because it really won't increase your frame rate by much or make it so that your programs run any faster than they already do. Especially after seeing my benchmark results can very weirdly. In the end though, this PC isn't bad, but I also feel like maybe it makes you yearn for more. I think that upgrading the CPU to an i7 would easily make this a much nicer PC that wouldn't bottleneck with almost every game out today, as well as one RAM slot not having issues. Then it could be worth to even upgrade the GPU as well to something with 6 or 8 gigabytes of VRAM. However, I feel like that would be fruitless to do. What makes the side of the road gaming PC so special was that while some of the parts were amazing, it also wasn't broken overpowered or anything like that. Besides the case being the most expensive part of the build, it inspires you to upgrade it in the same way you would upgrade an office PC. Just add another stick of RAM, a low-end GPU, and you are off to the races. You wouldn't put a high-end car to upgrade the CPU and the cooler and replace the power supply when at that point you might as well just build a cheap PC from scratch and find a good deal on some parts down the line. Unless you already had the build from when you bought it, it wouldn't be worth it to upgrade when new parts are already similarly priced. All things considered, I think that this PC will live on for a while, and I hope its new owner will be very, very happy. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Around the time this gets uploaded, I should be at around a thousand subscribers, which I am very grateful for. I never thought I would make it this far, honestly. If you have any questions, comment. I like to reply to everyone who has a question or has something to say. I have a Discord on the way, which I will hopefully set up soon, so look out for that. Don't forget to like the video, and as always, thanks for watching.